Hi, my name is Scott Lissa. I'm here at beautiful Piper's Lagoon, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about owning an Airbnb here in Nanaimo, British Columbia. Before we get started, give us a like or subscribe. It lets us know what we're doing, you like and you want to see more of it. Now, without any further ado, let's check out some investment properties here on Vancouver Island. Vancouver Island is the top destination in all of Western Canada for tourism. And it's not hard to understand why. Just look at the beauty we're surrounded by. And there's so many things to do out here. And the people are so friendly. It's what we refer to as living the island life. And people come out here in droves and they book their stays in short-term rentals utilizing one of two services, Airbnb or VRBO. And these are great online services that allow people to book either a single bedroom or an entire house for a family to stay in next to the beach. VRBO and Airbnb are online websites that homeowners use to rent out their properties. And a short-term rental is defined as anything that you stay in for under 30 days. And you could be renting out a single bedroom or an entire house. Really what this comes down to is you could be making anywhere from $100 a night to thousands of dollars a night. So this is why it's become so attractive to different investors. It's hard to understand what these businesses are like until you talk to somebody who operates a short-term rental. This person is named Liz and she operates a stunning farm with a beautiful home in Lanceville overlooking the news bay. Hi, I'm Liz Thomas. I operate an Airbnb in Lanceville, BC that is just north of Nanaimo. I've been doing short-term rentals for a few years now. Um, I gained the house uh, quite a few years ago now and decided this was a great way for me to be able to afford to keep the house. So did some rentals and now um, really enjoying running the Airbnb and meeting all the neat people that are out there. Uh, right now it is off season, summertime's finished, everybody's gone home, so I'm charging 500 a night. If you stay longer, you get a better deal. And the high season, which would be Christmas and then summertime next year, it will be 600 a night and still that deal applies. If you stay longer, you get a better deal. Some of the most challenging things is to know the regulations in the place where you want to have the Airbnb. You have to make sure you know those um, so that you can actually do it. And then the next thing is just uh, dealing with the people. Do you want people in your space? Do you want to deal with the people when there's a negative thing you have to deal with, along with the positive things that you have to deal with? You can find me on the Airbnb website. You can also find me on social media under Facebook and Instagram, which is under the title Lanceville Airbnb. So please reach out to me online and I hope to talk to you soon. Now, short-term rentals are not without their controversy. They cut into the supply of the long-term rentals that, because we have a short supply of long-term rentals, end up driving up the overall cost for monthly rent. Now, in light of this stress that this has caused on the rental market, the city of Nanaimo has enacted different bylaws that govern the use and operation of these individual investment properties. Now, if you wanna look down in the links below, there's a quick guidebook that'll help you better understand how to purchase one of these properties and how to operate them. But what we're gonna go over is the quick rules that you're going to need to know from a top level before you consider one of these investments. The first thing you need to understand is if you're going to rent your primary residence, whether it's a condo or a house, and you're gonna rent out the entire property, you can only rent it out for up to four months of the year. You, as your primary residence, have to live there for at least eight months. So that's one thing to consider if you don't have a secondary suite or a carriage house. 
Now, if you are planning on purchasing a home with a suite and residing in part of the property and renting out the other portion of it, keep in mind you need to make sure it's a legal suite and there's a whole bunch of bylaws that dictate what a legal suite is. Now you can look this up on the city of Nanaimo, it's bylaw 4500 that deals with this particular type of property, but make sure you're talking to a realtor so they better understand what you plan on using the property for and whether or not the legal use of it can be operated as a short-term rental. Beyond actually having the right time frames and the right type of structure that you're going to rent out, you're also going to need to get a business license through the city of Nanaimo. And there's a link down below to find the application for this type of short-term rental. Now, keep in mind, this needs to be renewed annually and you're gonna be operating a business, so act accordingly, get yourself a business license. Now the final thing you need to consider when you're getting one of these types of property is having adequate parking. And there is a table they've created for the different types of properties and the number of spaces you're required to have for what's called off-street parking. You cannot have multiple people parking on the street, blocking services and the neighbors, which creates a major nuisance. So keep in mind, final thing to consider is where are all your guests gonna park? Thank you for taking the time to go through with me the different requirements here in Nanaimo and Vancouver Island for short-term rentals. And if you have a second, give us a like or subscribe. It lets us know what we're doing you like and you want to see more of it. If you have any questions though, make sure you put them down in the comments below. My name is Scott Lissa. I hope you get to live the island life soon. Take care. Bye-bye.